Hi everyone, welcome back to The Mystic in the Woods. I'm Kate, and in this installment of our Shadow Work and Tarot series, we are covering the Devil, the Lover's Card, and Societal Conditioning. Now, if you saw the first installment in this series, uh, you know that for me, the Lover's Card is one of my primary Shadow Work cards, because for me, it's very often about bringing two pieces of ourself into harmony, bringing a bringing two pieces, whatever that might look like, and integrating them together. So this could be masculine and feminine energy, light and dark energy. It could be anything that's sitting in our unconscious and integrating it with our consciousness. So shadow work. It's also a reminder for me and for when I'm reading for others that our human experience is sacred, that we are both fully human with our full, you know, fully human mind and body and experience. And we are also fully divine with our sacred soul or higher self or whatever you want to call that. That we are both human and divine equally. And that we are here to learn to integrate those and move through the world from an integrated, authentic, fully divine and fully sacred place. Now, this is why I love depictions like this from the Nameless One Tarot and Oracle and this from the uh, Tarot of the Abyss. I have reviews of both of these decks on my channel because these aren't people. And so it helps us to separate the lover's card meaning about relationships, which it certainly can point to. And it helps to bring it into something else. So in this card, we have the dove skeleton and we have the dove's exterior. And she talks about in the guidebook how both of these are real aspects of the dove and both are required for the dove to be a full dove. In this, in Terror of the Abyss, we have the two trees that have basically become one and their roots are entwined. And if you know anything about how like roots and mycelium and everything like that work in a forest, we have a whole nother direction that we can take the lover's card about uh, bringing things together. So it's about, we are both fully human and fully divine. And how do we move through the world in that way? Now, traditionally we have images more like this. This is the darkness of light tarot, um, where we have two people, right? We have like an angel and the things. And then we have the devil card traditionally that looks something like this, where we have two people trapped. Now, in a lot of traditional imagery, we very likely have the same two, two people. It looks like these could be the same two people in both cards, right? United in one and trapped in the other. So for me, the devil's card or the devil card is one of those cards that comes in and says, where are we causing separation in our life? What things are creating a separation between our humanity and our divinity, between our consciousness and our unconsciousness, between whatever piece of our authentic self we have severed away and put in our shadow and the human life we're living right now. What are the pieces of separation? What are the traps? What are the bonds that are keeping those two things apart? Now, let's talk about the concept of sin for a minute because this plays heavily into the devil card for me. Now, of course, this concept of sin has been co-opted by the church to be this big bad thing, right? How we're all born sinful and all this stuff. Originally, the concept of sin is more a more akin to like missing the mark, right? Like you shot your shot, you missed the target. That's it. Now we can miss the target on either side of the target, but all it means is that you missed. Now, the church then came in and said, when you sin, that makes you a bad person. This is why the seven deadly sins are so powerful. And of course, if you're following me on Instagram, you're hearing me talk a lot about that right now. I have the whole seven deadly sins um, collaboration with Kristen Ramazana on the channel you can go watch. I have a whole group program where we deprogram the seven deadly sins in ours. All of those links are below. But the church came in with the seven deadly sins and said, this is what it means to be a good person. The seven deadly sins aren't about what you do, they are about who you are. You are envious, you are prideful, you are angry. And if you are these things, you are bad. They are the way society upholds things like good girl conditioning. That you need to be a good girl and good girls aren't angry or envious or prideful or any of the things, okay? They weave their way into all of the archetypal wounding that we carry and they have very much to do with how we've internalized the patriarchy, all the things. 
Now, the seven deadly sins come from the writing of a Christian monk, where he had eight, and they were like the eight evil thoughts or the eight inner demons or something like that. He was writing to other Christian monks. And these were places that you could basically create separation from God. Now, he probably originally got this concept from the Gospel of Mary, because the Gospel of Mary was still in circulation at the time of his writing. The Gospel of Mary is very much about becoming anthropos, a full human, a child of humanity. It's about being fully human and fully divine. And in the Gospel are the seven powers. They correlate very strongly to the seven deadly sins. The difference is that in the Gospel of Mary, they aren't these like big evil things you should never do. They are places where we can get stuck places where it becomes easy to forget our divinity or our soul. The problem isn't when you feel angry. The problem is when you act on your anger from a place of only ego, forgetting you are also a divine soul. So the seven powers in the Gospel of Mary aren't innately bad. They aren't bad that they exist. It isn't bad that you feel them. They are just places that we can get stuck and cause separation between our humanity and our divinity. So the devil card comes in and says, where are you getting stuck that is causing separation here in the lover's card? Now, another way that the devil card can come up for us is really about societal conditioning religious programming, things like the seven deadly sins and how they're driving our beliefs and our behaviors. When we are talking about the lover's card and we are talking about integration, integrating our unconscious beliefs with our consciousness, we are talking about becoming fully human and fully divine. Societal conditioning can get in the way of that. We are born fully authentic, as a fully authentic tiny human. We are born without the societal programming. We are born fully divine and fully human. Societal conditioning can come in and create separation. It tries to tell us who we are, it tries to tell us what to believe, and it tries to tell us how to act. And part of the job of the devil card and the lover's card is teasing out your inner voice that is your most authentic, your most intuitive, your most connected from all that societal conditioning. Because very often the voice we're listening to and creating our life from is actually just societal conditioning. It's like having the stereotypical angel and devil on your shoulder, your most authentic self, and then societal conditioning as these two voices that are in your head trying to drive your behavior. Our job, as per like the Gospel of Mary, or if we're looking at the lover and the lovers and the devil card together, is to tease those two things apart so that we can hear our most authentic voice and act from that place. Now there's one more way that I want to talk about the devil card and that is in this idea of um, you know the saying better the devil you know than the devil you don't. It's a saying that says the familiar is safer than the unfamiliar even if the familiar is toxic or uncomfortable in some way. It is our nervous system, our inner child, our ego trying to keep us safe by acting in ways that are familiar, by uh, holding on to patterns and beliefs that are familiar, by staying in situations that are familiar. The devil card, and I like this depiction from the Ember and Aura Tarot, um, can also come in and point that out, where we are staying in the familiar because it feels safe. In this card, and it's a little bit hard to see, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see on camera, she's in this cage, yes, and her wings are have been stripped from her and they're up here. So her humanity 
has been separated from her divinity and she's in a cage. The key is in the cage with her. All she has to do is unlock it and walk out. But the cage, the cage has become familiar. So sometimes the devil card comes in and says, where are you sitting in familiarity? Because of programming or fear about the unfamiliar. Now, this is especially relevant, I think, when it comes to following our most authentic voice, living our most authentic life, um, embracing our magic and stepping into our power, because that's scary. And we don't all, most of us probably, when we were growing up, didn't have examples of what that looked like. We didn't have examples of what it looks like to embrace the sacred feminine. It didn't, we didn't have examples of what it looked like to blaze our own path or to be our most authentic and magical selves. We didn't have that example. And so it's unfamiliar. And to our nervous system and our inner child and our ego, unfamiliar equals unsafe. So I think that the devil card can also come in and just say, where are you letting yourself stay stuck in familiarity? Where is it time to release the bonds of release the bonds of societal conditioning and step out of the cage? Now, of course, this is all easier to say and talk about and look at on the cards than it is to do in daily life. It is exceptionally hard to do in daily life. It requires shadow work and self-awareness and expansion and nervous system healing for a lot of us. It can really require a lot of work. But I think that this is what these two cards come in to talk, to talk to us about, to ask us to do, to point out to us. They come in to ask, where are you staying stuck in familiarity? Where are you allowing yourself to be separated? To, where are you allowing your most authentic part to be separate from the persona that you are letting society see? Where are you letting your humanity and your divinity be separate instead of integrated? Where are you letting yourself stay stuck? Where are you, where are you letting yourself stay trapped? I think the devil card is actually one of empowerment because it's not usually about somebody else actively doing something to us. Like there isn't a third party or second party or whatever devil in this situation. It's about the bonds of society and how we are ready to break free from them. So if there's anything in this you would like me to elaborate on, if you have questions about anything, don't hesitate to throw those in the comments below. I'm just gonna give you a quick reminder if you're interested. I have a 90 day group program starting in January, date to be determined, um, where we are gonna deep dive into all of this. It is a small group program. There are three spots left as of recording this. Early bird pricing ends on November 30th, and we are gonna spend 90 days shedding all of those societal bonds, all of that conditioning, all of that programming. All the information is below at the link. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out, and I will see you in the next video.